All right, we move ahead to our next guest, a very relaxed next guest, as you can see right now, the top, a top 15 lightweight in the world. It's a little strange because had things gone on the way they were scheduled to, we'd be talking about what happened at UFC 249. It's been a bit of a yeah. wild road for us all, but definitely for this man, Alex Hernandez. Alex, how are you? This is like the debut of Massage yeah. Table Chronicles. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. I got, I got, I'm getting a massage right now. I'm on the table, so we're getting a real intimate uh look today but uh but yeah i'm doing good man i'm chilling i just got uh got back on the uh, i mean i guess i was already on the horse but you know i kind of uh, relaxed reset last week a little bit let my body cool off because you know just the the toll it takes on your body getting ready for camp and lining up for that week so um i just did some things outdoors and started hitting it really hard uh at the latter end of last week and, and getting into this week so got my dude here he's <laughs> Yeah, there's his ass. Yeah, so he's <laughs> he's working on the legs, and we're getting back to it, man. Get get back to work today. Well, you see him in a really good place mentally right now, probably mo mostly because of the massage right now. But how have you handled the sort of on again, off again happenings with UFC 249 and April 18th and all that stuff? Yeah, man, that was a roller coaster ride. You know, like I said, you know, fighting itself takes such a toll on you. You know, you get. The, the anxiety, the sleepless nights, um, the physical toll, the emotional toll. And so, uh, oh, let me switch sides here. Oh, my bad, dude. Uh, <laughs> so, so the whole, <laughs> it's so ridiculous. <laughs> so the, uh, yeah, the, the whole, the whole fucking thing was, I mean, it, it was, it was mayhem and it was like, uh, you know, I had, I mean, my, my own head coach fell out at one point. He got sick. Um, I, thought I caught some shit at some point where I was just having to fight through it and just train. But every time I'd start revving up, I'd get like insanely nauseous and really hot. And so, um, but I mean, getting tested is difficult. So I don't really worry about that shit, but I, I just, um, uh, I mean, it, it's, it seemed like we were all kind of dropping at one point. Uh, but, but again, you know, my employer and my opponents weren't really, um, pandering the fear or, or, you know, adhering to, really any, any of the laws or, or any of the, any, like, like a pandemic was going on at all. So we just had to like, kind of get on this, uh, mountain of optimism, you know, and kind of keep that perspective with the UFC and, um, just push through, you know, not be a bitch. And, and that, that's what I did. And I got a fuckload better in the last, you know, two months. I mean, I, I've been, I've been in camp mode since, you know, since January 1st, it seems. So, um, I, I've been going hard for a long time now and, um, and I've radically improved and I kind of justified or, or sort of confirmed that to myself just in these last few days, taking off, resetting, um, and not worrying, not worrying about an opponent so much or an event and just coming in, having some fun with the guys in the gym. Everybody's really eager just to get in here. So I kind of opened the doors a little bit and, um, uh, and just ran through everybody just for all these poor bastards that we call teammates just got humbled so that felt good it felt good to take the blinders off have some fun and just uh just fuck people up um so i i am i am in a pretty good uh pretty good space right now i've got a good workplace uh before me right now and i've got a bunch of eager guys are ready to get back in the gym um so yeah we're not i mean we're, we've i've already kind of got over the whole idea and i'm just looking forward to the next thing now you know the, the last time we spoke, you were actually in the Middle East for that Fighters for Freedom tour, and you were talking about, you know, viewing things in a different light through that experience, you know, what the soldiers deal with overseas, things you may have taken for granted. But I think the most important thing to you was being able to form your own opinions about a lot of these different global topics and not going right. along with the perceptions of others. Like, That's looking true. back, how much has that experience helped you when it comes to the coronavirus and what's going on in the world right now? Oh, I mean, I mean so much. And I mean, it, my whole thing, and, and it's kind of like a philosophy that transcends everything is that like stagnation's death, like, like, like movements life, you need it. And so for, for me, my biggest thing was like, I'm, I'm just not going to pander to these fears and this like insanity that people are running with. Like, I'm just going to keep living my life. The exact same. That's exactly what I did. Like I, I trained the same, um, I, I, I operate the same in, in pretty much every capacity that, that, that I ran. The only thing was going to the um, uh, the grocery store, you know, felt like apocalyptic now or whatever, you know, it was like a, like the fucking world was about to burn down. But, but other than that, like I just stayed in my bubble. I was home, gym, home, gym, kept my training partners, 
fortunately it seems like Brazilians just don't give a fuck. So I, I had the, all the crew there, you know, and, and we were, we were getting things done, um, pretty much the exact same. And, and it was, um, it was good. We just, I, I just didn't, I didn't, you know, indulge the fears. I just kept moving. I kept working. And when I got sick, I just kept working. And, uh, and I fucking ate that shit up, dude. COVID's probably trying to deal with me right now, figure out like the antibodies to conquer my shit. I probably fucked it up. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like, I'm just not worried about it. And and the more that, you know, information comes out um, with the ratios, death ratios, and people start kind of realizing that, oh, we've been categorizing everything into this like COVID umbrella, you know, the more I hope people can kind of be like, okay, this, this isn't maybe everything is cracked up to be. It's not the end of the world. It's not something to like, really even hide from, you, you know, just, just take care of yourself. Like, like, like anything else, it, hell, hell's found within, you know? And, um, and so I, I think we just need to operate a so to ourselves, take care of ourselves, be our best versions of ourselves before we go. I don't know, point the fingers, creating fucking, uh, conspiracies or whatever the fuck else. Like you just take care of yourself and then just get back on track in life. And, uh, and so I, I think, I think that helps. I mean, what that has to do with the Middle East thing, I think just being level-headed, you know, just just maintaining a, a level mind. You mentioned that you were sick, your coach was sick. Do you think, I don't know if he got tested, you mentioned things about the testing, you didn't really get into it too much. Do you think you had it at all, or do you think you're just my, my, my coming down with something? Got, my head coach uh, did have it, and I mean, I was breathing that dude's air, so I mean, maybe. He um, probably did have it. Yeah, uh, maybe, maybe, but I, I just... Just fucked it up, dude. <laughs> just not worried about it. Yeah, I, just, you know, I, I had to get ready for a fight. That's what I was going to do. I, I said that's what I was going to do, and that's what I did. And I'm in the best shape of my life, so uh, I'm 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 ready to uh, I'm I'm ready to take on whatever challenge. I'm ready to fight any opponent that's available here in the states. I'm ready for whatever. And I guess you, you know you're talking about I get maybe just perspectives and things like that with that trip or just any other trip I've been on or just life. Um, one thing that I was able to do was have understanding and sympathy for uh, the Russians and leaving prematurely. I mean, it felt like they left prematurely, but maybe they didn't. You know, um, those flight bans were coming up. The likelihood of the fight was was slim. It, you know, dim dim outlook for sure. And then it ended up not happening anyways. And so for them to have to go back to their country and get back to their you know their homes, their families, I could understand that. And so for me, it wasn't something that I like dwelled over. It wasn't something I, like sulked on. I just, uh, I just got back to it and, uh, and my, yeah, flip, flip. <laughs> yeah, thanks for dealing with me, dude. But, uh, the greatest yeah, interview I, of all I time. Just, yeah, I was just, I was just ready for the next thing. So that's, uh, that's what we did. Yeah. I thought it was kind of interesting cause you know, the Makachev fight was the one that was lined up. And then once we figured out he was off the card, Omar Morales was slated to be your new opponent. I mean, he's undefeated. He's a, had a great win on the contender series, got a win in the UFC, no disrespect to Omar, but to go from a top 15 guy to, you know, a surging prospect like Omar, were you happy with that matchup? Because I was a little, a little surprised to see that name if, if we're being honest here. Well, and th that goes back to the roller coaster ride, man. And I just had to like, this camp, I was able to take complete domain over my mind and um, and kind of get back to this cavalier state of not giving a fuck at all. I was I was training and prepared to fight like a man who had nothing to lose. I wasn't worried about shit. And so, um, you know, the, the, is the fight on? Is the fight off? Okay, now my opponent's out of the country. He's for sure out. Okay, now I don't have a location. Now I don't have an opponent. That goes by for a whole week. Try not to check out. Then, okay, now we got a list of names. I thought Michael Johnson was going to be the name. And then... The, the next day, it was like, you know, now there's this Omar Morales guy. Um, you got 10 minutes. Do you want him or not? Okay, well, what happened to the other ones? Now oh, those other guys are off the table now. Do you want this guy or not? Well, I mean, fuck yeah, I want to fight. So just give, just give me the guy. I don't, I don't care who it is. Just give me the guy. Okay, this is the guy. So then we got the guy. Michael Johnson got a guy. Everybody got a guy. They lined up the card, you know, and then, and then one week before it fell out. But it, it was just, it, you just had to be malleable and, and roll with the punches, you know, mold to whatever you know, everything else threw at you because uh, all I could do is just control my own shit. And, and, and sometimes that's not even really picking your opponent. It's just, it's just who, who do you got who's available <laughs> and who do they want you to fight? And, and it seemed like that's who they wanted me to fight. So that's what I was going to do. By the same token though, I've never had an opponent that wasn't top 15. Every guy I've all, every guy I've fought since I've entered the UFC and I didn't come off of, you know, another giant organization. I just came out of fucking LFA, you know, with a, with a humble, 
record of under 10 fights. Everybody that I fought um, at the time of signing was, was a top 15 ranked opponent. You know, even if they weren't by the time we actually got to the card, when we were negotiating, they were. And, uh, and so fighting someone like Morales would have been someone that I naturally would have fought on my way up and would have had the opportunity to kind of, I don't know, display something different. And also, also just for the sake of separation of degrees, showing people that I, I do belong in the top 15 because people doubt whatever, you know, just, just because of how I've kind of like risen in there and how I just jumped in, like, I wouldn't have mind putting on display of, you know, here, here's the difference between me and them. And then here's why I am where I'm at. Um, is it, is it the ranked opponent that the caliber I would want to know, but it would have been a guy who's trying to take my head off, who's hungrier than hell and, um, an underdog. And I always respect an underdog. You know, I did, I did more against a higher ranked opponent in less time. So he, he was, he was certainly, you know, not being overlooked. Was there a part of you that was like, you know, I mean, you're having this not giving an F mentality towards the fight and, and who they present to you at this point. Was there a part of you that's like, it doesn't matter who the name is. I'm going to put pen to paper because this thing's probably not going to happen anyways. Yeah, well, and so that was a, that was a shit part because you couldn't say it wasn't going to happen. As much as like that big part of your brain, I guess, called logic was like, dude, there's no way this thing happens. <laughs> you had to keep your heart. <laughs> you had to keep your heart held high and, and keep training as if it were, because I mean, the last thing you want, you know, is to be checked out when it's time to check in. So, um, I, I was just prepared for anyone and I just had to keep the belief that it was going to take place. Um, I, I think the whole process is a little frustrating. So it was like, man, maybe at a certain point you don't, you don't keep pushing, um, because you're really dragging us, you know, through the mud with you, but it's, uh, it just was what it was. It was an experience, man. It was a grower. It was, it was a growth metric for sure. And you know, it doesn't kill you. It does make you stronger. And I, we, we did, we became a better team through all this. So I'm not, I'm not mad at it. So we saw the May 9th card sort of get put out there. Yeah. Your name was not on it. So were yeah. you offered a fight for that event? And were, were you, I, uh, I'd seen something that you weren't, you weren't interested in fighting on that card. Is that true? Uh, yeah. I, I don't want to fight on that card because again, I, I don't want to be strung out by the time I get to a fight. You know, I've already been preparing. Uh, I revved up for a specific date. The date fell out. And so I don't want to get strung into this May 9th, uh, debacle if, if it falls out too. I, I want, I want to see that happen. You know, I, I was, I was on the front lines before. Okay. I want to see, I want to see, I want to see somebody else do it now. I want to see that May 9th card come to fruition. And then if it does, they're looking at doing the 16th and the 23rd. So put, put me on one of those cards, put me on that 23rd card. Um, after we just know that it's a possibility to have fights. Uh, cause the last thing I want is to get to May 9th and not happen. And then you get strung out to the next month. And your body's just taking a, a fucking toll. Your mind's taking a toll. And again, you get literally like a strung out sensation. Like, dude, I, I'm worn. I'm broken. I'd rather be under than overtrained. So you're just, you, you were pretty much just done with the roller coaster ride of it all. Let's just yeah. make sure a fight card actually takes place. And then, yeah, look, you know, yeah. at six days notice, a week and a half's notice, you're in. Yeah, yeah. I'm prepared. I'll get back. I just, I just don't, I don't want to keep just getting dragged. I don't want to keep getting dragged to uncertainty. I just want some clarity. So I was down before. I don't want to keep doing it. So let's just see. Let's see this May 9th card happen. And then we'll see what's up. I know the UFC put together these these conference calls for you guys on Friday and on Monday. And, you know, to sort of give you guys all an update on everything. And most of those topics were leaked out, as you've probably seen at this point. But do you yeah. feel better about things or maybe have a clearer sense of what the plan is between your employer and what you guys are, you know, sort of heading into after attending that call? They talk about paychecks. That's what, I, that's what I'm curious about. Well, curious that about too. Paycheck. Yeah, well, that was another yeah. question I was going to ask. I'm, I'm, I'm curious about a paycheck. That, that's really the only thing that's kind of on my mind too is, you know, I, I spent a lot of money in preparation for it, especially because uh, we got away up to the week the the week of, and so, or the, the sorry, the week right before. And so um, it's costly. It costs personally on your body. And then, and then, of course, paying your coaches and then convincing and coercing those guys to put on during a pandemic, you know, might be a little extra. So, um, um, that, that's the only thing I'm really curious about. Everything else is still to me is, is as gray as it was, you know, when the fight got canceled. So I don't really think that we've done a good job of bringing any clarity, but also, you know, it's just kind of the world we're in right now. It doesn't have a lot of clarity. Do you expect at this point to get some sort of compensation for this past Saturday's fight at all? Like just based on what you've yeah. heard or conversations you've had? 
Yes, and it, it was. Uh, I mean, it was declared so. So I would. I, I I do I do expect him to come through on that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you gotta you gotta pay for those massages, man. You gotta pay. Dude, these massages are not cheap. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Uh. Um, you know, opponent wise, doesn't really matter at this point. I mean, if it can't be Makachev, like what makes sense to you? Is it Morales? Anybody? It doesn't really matter at this point. Let's let's not give the Fs like yeah. you were talking about. Let's just yeah fight. yeah no no ex- exactly at this point it's just like um, who who's on soil and who's prepared. And that that's that's literally the only credentials we can really run by. Um, I need action. Uh, victories will, you know, further propel my career and uh, and just W's in the UFC. You, you know, again, I, I didn't get this like long road up. <clears throat> I didn't get to like tailor make anything or uh, or really create this like long little highlight reel off of you know nobody. So I was just prepared to do that on somebody's, but. It, it, pandemic strikes and we need somebody to get knocked out dude i'll knock that guy out whoever it is i don't i I will yeah indiscriminately do that i wanted to ask you about this because you've you've brought up some interesting things about the the mental and the physical that fight camps take a toll on and i've had conversations in the past about this you know like most things this is something that probably gets easier with time but how do you handle like the post fight emotional swings. I'm not talking about like wins and losses. I'm talking more about, you know, you put in all this work, you have a date, you have an opponent, you have a goal, the glitz, the lights, you have a fight and then it's just gone. And I've talked to fighters over the years that win or lose, once that feeling is gone and the fight is over, it puts them in a funk. Like it's almost uh, like a depression in a way. Is that something you've ever dealt with uh, before? I, I, I don't catch that weird shit, dude. I'm not, you I'm know? not like, I'm not like, Oh, I live for the light. No, <laughs> I'll do that shit, dude. I'll tell you what though. I could die at any moment after a victory. I cannot die after a loss. I think that all the fucking time. I'm like, I'm happy with my life where I'm at. Like if I'm on a plane, which I'm on pretty regularly, you know, just, just between me obligations, work or fucking, uh, just training, you know? Um, and it, after I, after like a good victory, I'm on top. I've, I've like fulfilled my fill. I'm like, you know what, dude, this plane crashed. I'm, I'm Gucci. I'm good. I'm not worried about anything. After that Cerrone loss, you cannot kill me. I could not die. I had to, I have to get some redemption back. I've got to like be on top again. You know, after a loss, it's like, I'm just constantly seeking, um, the next point of redemption. But after a victory, I'm, I'm good. I'm set for life, man. I'm just wanting, I want the next victory, but I'm not, I'm not chasing, um, the applause by any stretch, you know? And I'm also, I don't want to be a fighter for life. This is what I want to do for now. I, I want to achieve my goals and then I want to move on to the next venture. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm Alex. I'm not, you know, the MMA guy or the fucking UFC fighter. I'm not, I don't like pride myself on a title like that. So right. when do you, did you have a timeline on this? I mean, I know oh, yeah, you're I mean, very I, I want to bounce out. I want to bounce out before 35, you know? So I'm 27 right now. That's plenty of time to get all my shit in, get everything I need to earn, make my connections, steal the glop and move on to the next, you know, the next venture that's what do you think that's going to be uh well that irish son of a bitch took my whiskey so i'm just probably going to chase the mexican <laughs> roots and go with tequila you like those palms boy <laughs> the mazel <Mazda's> there too <laughs> uh, <laughs> i thought you, had a, I thought you were time. growing a third hand for a second yeah. <laughs> god damn dude, i look so fucking ugly too this thing old puffy ass <laughs> bitch uh, <laughs> uh yeah dude balls with all this going on the tequila now isn't he yeah he's got one yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I just gotta make mine more known. I guess. You know, it's tough. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta take me seriously, dude. <laughs> I didn't want. I didn't want. I didn't want to cancel on you last minute, uh, because he changed your time, and, and I, 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 I lost. I, lost I, I don't pay attention to my times, anyways. I just wake up in the morning and check the itinerary. So, I was like, well, I certainly don't want to do Mike like that. He's got a schedule it here too. You know. So you, this is this is way better. This is way better than you just sitting in, in your gym. This is you have, now you have to do every interview like this. Uh, I'll, I'll hang from a rapture or something next time. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking. All right, a couple, couple more things. I'll let you finish the rest of the massage here. Ferguson <laughs> versus Gaethje. Who do you like in that fight? Uh that's tough. You know, um, I, I think like what what most believe opening three rounds. I think Gaethje's got a, a shot, like a. <clears throat> I'd almost say it's Gaethje's advantage, but then if it starts going into the, the fourth round, yeah, maybe even the third or the fourth round, maybe even halfway through the third. I don't know. See, my kind of mindset's changed now that now that he's got the time, and I'm so glad he's got the time because that fight honestly bothered me 
because I want Gaethje to have his uh, his his camp. I want to have his 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 time to train and prepare. Um, but the way Gaethje's been fighting, uh, like his last few fights, who did he knock out? Vic, um, Cowboy Barbosa. Yep. The way that he's uh, just walked down and annihilated those guys, something's clicked in him. He's changed. He's not. Uh, he, he's. I think he's always been composed, but he's just really refined and um, and articulated his game better. And so now um, he takes less to do more. And, and I think the way that he's been taking guys out and the way that Ferguson is um, accessible to taking shots on the chin, I think Gagey's got a great shot of putting him away in the opening two rounds. I mean, a, a great shot. Ferguson always loses the first round. Uh, he notoriously loses the first round and then just devastates the second round. Um, against a guy like Gaethje, that's not really a round you, you want to lose. You know, those opening two rounds are really decisive. Uh, I might give it to Gaethje now, dude. I might just swing it to Gaethje. But Ferguson's a fucking freak, though, dude. I, don't, I mean, who do you got, man? I don't know. Convince me. I, I honestly don't know. I really uh, – a week ago, I was all Ferguson. Then I started to think more, and now I'm kind of Gaethje. I, I, I think it's in it probably the fight of the century. I, I think it's an incredible fight. I really, I don't know. I wouldn't want to fight either one of those guys right now in my career. <laughs> to, I'm with you. I'm with yeah. you. What did you think of Ferguson making weight on Friday? Uh, dude, that guy, that guy's a maniac. I mean, I think, <laughs> I think, uh, I, I think that's exactly what he needed to do, you know, to, to be, to stay true to himself, to stay, to, to keep the fear in people's hearts and to, to keep, uh, to keep true to, you know, the, the guys who question his sanity that that was the move to make, and uh, and I don't. I think he's. I think he's a perfect maniac. I think he's a workaholic. You know, maniac. I, I think he's. Uh, I think he's exactly who he needs to be and what he needs to be, uh, especially for you know <laughs> his occupation and his role as a champion. So uh, I admire him. I do. I, I think uh, I would never do that. I, I don't personally think that there's a big enough point in it, but I, I see why he did, it and I'm and I'm into it. So you know, keep on being Fergie, Fergie. You know. Yeah, keep on being you, my man. Enjoy the rest of that massage. Yeah. Always great Thank catching you. up with you. Yeah, yeah, look forward to seeing what's next for you, man. Stay healthy, safe, and uh, <laughs> I will, dude. You know, I will. All that good stuff. We'll talk soon, man. Thank you. All right, all right. Good catching up, man. Later. All right. See ya. <laughs>